Thank you for joining this series on the topics of OAuth 2.0 and OpenID Connect using Layer 7 API Management's OAuth Toolkit. In this continuing video, we're going to look at the installation and basic configurations of the OAuth Toolkit. Before we start, let's review some of the components which are optionally deployable using the Layer 7's OAuth Toolkit. The resource server, the authorization, and the token servers are the primary OAuth client APIs that are exposed to consuming applications. For our demo, the OAuth toolkit will be installed in a single instance for simplicity, like in a dev or test environment. However, oftentimes in a secure and segmented production architecture, the client-facing OAuth APIs will be deployed on a disparate DMZ server exposed in an external network while your identity provider, back-end server, sensitive APIs, as well as client identity and token stores are maintained on an internal and secured private segment. The specific stages of OAuth negotiation are shown in sequence here, specifically for the authorization code grant type, from the initial authorization to the token issuance and validation to accessing protected APIs with the token from a segmented system. For simplicity today, we will have all the components enabled on a single gateway instance. Now to get started on the deployment of the Layer 7 OTK, we'll follow three basic steps. Initially, we'll download the artifacts, we'll create the token schema in one of the three storage systems we've indicated here. We'll then install the OAuth solution kit, configure which components we'd like to deploy and integrate with the token store we just created, and finally, We'll configure the final stages of trust using certificates and we'll enable and test our test client. To get started, go ahead and click on the tech docs that are linked here. To begin, we start by downloading the OAuth toolkit installation files from Broadcom support. The package will be available in otkinstallers.zip and it'll contain the Science Solution Kit archive as well as the database scripts. The database scripts need to be run against the token storage system of either MySQL, Oracle, or Cassandra, and the files needed are indicated here. Additionally, customization to the OAuth toolkit can be done to do things like support proof code, proof key for code exchange, configure a separate authorization server, or configure token lifetimes in a customized manner. If you have any questions about OTK endpoints, we have interactive Swagger documentation available here for the authorization server APIs, resource server APIs, as well as token server APIs. To get started on the installation, we'll go ahead and open up our policy manager and navigate to tasks, data sources. Here, we have to select the token storage system that we configured with our original script downloads. In my example, we're going to use the onboard MySQL database that comes in the appliance. So we'll select manage JDBC connections. And you can see I've already pre-configured my OAuth connection string to a database called OTKDB. We can test the JDBC URL and user credentials, validate that it is passed. Now when we are installing our OAuth solution kit, we'll enable this integration during the installation. To get started on the installation, select extensions and add-ons, manage solution kits. Here we can select install and browse to the location of our signed solution kit archive. Now we can select the components that we'd like to deploy. Because we're doing an all-in-one deployment, I'm going to select all and then unselect the Cassandra connection because we'll be using MySQL. If this were a disparate deployment, I would select the DMZ and shared components for my DMZ server and the internal and shared components for my internal server. Once deployed, the various components can be seen in the policy manager window. After successful deployment, a new directory will be created 
in the directory window in the lower left hand pane. And here we can see folders for customizations, policy fragments, as well as our server. We can see a reusable fragment has been created called OTK require OAuth 2.0 token. That is now a reusable policy fragment that can be easily dropped into existing or new policies to enable OAuth. In addition to the validation, we have a sample resource server set up that we'll be using to demonstrate the protection. If we take a look at a sample policy, we will see a simple usage of the policy fragment OTK require OAuth2 token. And we can see some simple input configurations, which we've set no necessarily required scope. The cache validation is set for 30 seconds. And in this case, it is not a one-time access token. Upon successful validation, we simply return a template response to the end user showing some information about the validated OAuth token, including the client ID and the expiration time. For simple customizations, we have a customization folder with hash policies that allow us to customize items like whether or not we want to use a JSON web token as an access token or an opaque UUID. We can also configure customized token lifetime storage and other variable configurations. Grant types are shown here, as well as under our policy fragments, we see all of the supported grant types. And customization of authentication can be achieved using the OTK user authentication extension. Here we see authorized users are queried against an internal identity provider. I could select any of my other identity providers as shown here, or using the simple LDAP identity provider wizard, I could create a new connection to LDAP, AD, or other identity provider and customize things like groups, users, or certificate settings. Shown on line 16, we also have built-in integrations with our SiteMinder single sign-on solution to exchange OAuth tokens for SM session cookies. All right. Of all the grant types shown here, in this example, we're going to take a look at the authorization code grant type. And we'll show you how to get started using our test client in the next video. Thank you.